Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Channel Shadow Moses. I am your host Moses, and today on Should You Play, we are talking about this game. Bloodspell. Now, Bloodspell is an action adventure, action RPG, roguelike dungeon crawler. I think that's the best way I could possibly explain it. And it sounds confusing because it kind of is. It takes a little bit from our favorite kind of IPs that we've grown to know and love, such as like Dark Souls, uh, Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry, kind of a little bit of everything. So it's really hard for me to put this game in a specific genre. I'm not sure how the developers would do so themselves. Now, what I really want to talk about in this review are the good things I liked about the game, the things I kind of feel neutral about, and kind of the negative parts about this game. So when I first started this game, I was hearing that it was a Dark Souls clone, sort of like Lords of the Fallen or Sekiro or Bloodborne or something like that. So I was really eager to sink my teeth into this game. Unfortunately, for me anyway, I don't really feel that's the case. There are definitely some Dark Souls elements in here, but I don't really feel like that's the case. But first, let's start with the combat. The combat is outstanding. I really enjoy the combat. It has a different variety of weapons, has um, almost almost Ninja Gaiden-like play style, which in a almost Dark Souls settings feels really fun to use. The enemies are um, somewhat challenging, but not too challenging, so you still feel like you're being challenged as you're playing the game. Um, I like the fact that there are different weapons, um, unlike uh, the new game uh, from, from Software Sekiro, where if you don't know how to beat a boss with a sword, well, just get good with the sword and keep praying. But in this game, like Dark Souls or even Ninja Gaiden and Devil May Cry games like that, you're able to switch from your sword sword to your spear to your buster swords to your talons. You're able to switch from all those uh, different weapons, which gives you a different variety of play styles and a different way to approach each and every boss and enemy you encounter, which is one of the things I've always loved about the Soul series. Now, when it comes to the dodging mechanic of the game, dodging is one of the things I really appreciate about this game. It's subtle, but it's, it's pretty good. When you dodge, you don't dodge too far, and you don't have to dodge too far where it feels like when you dodge really far, you have to like dodge all the way back just to finish or continue your combo. It feels almost like an extended sidestep. It doesn't feel that bad. And the iframes and the invincibility frames are pretty, pretty good for this game as well. Now, blocking, I'm not going to lie, I did not block in this game. There is a reason for that, and I will get to that later. But to be honest, I just figured out it was in the game. But like I said, I'll get to that later in the review. Um, but that's pretty much it. But there's one more thing. Um, one of the things I did like about this game is that you can hold two weapons at the same time. So you have your sub weapon, your main weapon. And I've only seen a few games do this, namely Bloodborne, is that when you're attacking with an enemy, you're attacking with a weapon in the middle of a combo, you can switch to your other weapon to continue the combo or finish the combo. I thought that was a very good touch. Um, I very rarely see other games do it, but I thought that was a really good nudge um, and a really good point taken from Bloodborne. Now, when it comes to kind of the middle, the customer creation, customer creation, when it comes to the character customization, personally, I don't really care about this aspect. I never really do it very long, but there is none in this game. You are using a main character. It is a somewhat story driven game. And for better or for worse, if you care about those things, maybe. I mean, hopefully it doesn't hurt you too much, um, but you can't do that in this game. It still follows a Dark Souls equipment formula where you get an arm, a leg, uh, stats go up and stats go down about it. They don't really go too, too much into detail with the poise and everything like that, but it does have a Dark Souls feel to its equipment set. If you want to use a female, you can. It comes with a female and a female uh, costume. I'm not flipping that costume around because I don't want to get my video taken down, but it comes with a female costume and it comes with, uh, not comes with, sorry, but there are extra DLC costumes for the female as well if you want to pay. I think it was $7 or $9.99 for them. Now, the costume, if you choose to equip, the, if you choose to use the female character, you don't get to see the different costumes that you would normally get for the male. They don't have female uh, they don't have a female version of each costume, costume or equipment set, so you're using this blanket palette, a palette right here. So, I mean, I switched it a few times. It was fine for me. I didn't care, but that might be 
may be a deal breaker for some people. So from here on out, I'm gonna be talking about the negative aspects of this game. So the first main one is the overall game mechanics, like what makes the game the game, not necessarily the combat, but the things that are, that are enveloping around the combat. And the first one is the level design. The level design at first glance is very Dark Souls-ish. It feels like a Dark Souls game for a dungeon crawler or whatever you wanna call it. It feels like a game just like that. But once you die in that game, or in that stage, or actually any stage in the game, when you wake up from your jail cell, just like Dark Souls, everything's different. Um, the layout's different. They're pre-generated uh, stages. So it does not have a way where you can memorize where things are. Uh, chests will respawn for better or for worse. Items will respawn for better or for worse, and enemies will be shuffled around. So. If you're wondering what happens to your essence, because it still follows the Dark Souls formula of money, essence or blood, um, whatever you want to call it, they go away forever. I've searched the stage after reawakening, uh, clearing out every enemy, clearing out every stage uh, or every portion of the stage until the boss, and I found no instance of my souls on multiple occasions. So it looks like your souls are gone once they are gone. Now. The reason that's really bad is because one, as far as I can understand it, there's no way to store the store your souls or save them. And two, when you go into a shop, when you go into the item shop, let's say you want to buy the Buster Sword in the item shop, and it's five thousand souls or gems or whatever you want to call it. If you only have four thousand and you're right in front of the boss, there is nothing you can do until you beat the boss and get to the next shop in the next area and hope you survive all of that. That is the only way to do it. So I am not a fan of that. I am not fond of that. It doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, promote farming effectively. And to be honest, it will just frustrate you. If you die for whatever reason, you lose all your souls and you're saving for something, all of your work has literally gone down the trend without any way to retrieve your souls. So take that as you like, but personally, I do not find that as a good mechanic. Next are the healing items. There are none. There's no healing items in this game. Now, that's not necessarily the worst. It doesn't mean you can't be healed. Now, I think it was through an item I have that I got extremely early on the game, but it was essentially lifesteal. Think of it kind of like Bloodborne's lifesteal, but not nearly as much. But every time I hit, you can see right here, my life is slowly going up. Um, and the purple meter, I'll get to the purple meter in a little bit, but my life is slowly going up. Um, when I hit any kind of enemy, it goes up. And also when I open certain chests, it'll also go up. Well, sorry, I said that wrong. When I open chests, some of them you see are red, some of them you see are green, some of them you see are purple. Red is gives you your currency, uh, and a green gives you health. So if you break objects or open a chest, that's how you mainly recover health. Now, if you do die, you notice your purple meter goes down, it gives you a chance to revive. If you keep mashing Y, you will revive in exchange for your purple meter. Your purple meter is special. It's called Bloodthirst, I believe. It's how you do some of your specials in the game, and I'll get to that in a little bit. There's also something I found very interesting about this game. Um, for the last part about the gameplay mechanics anyway. So let's say you're trying to uh, beat the stage. You start in the first part of the stage, you go fight the boss. If when you go to fight the boss and then you lose and you go back to try to fight the boss, it's a different boss. It seems like every stage has two different kinds of bosses and it flip flops every time. So you, die, you lose to one, you have to fight another one. So it doesn't really give you an opportunity to memorize and understand the boss's play style effectively. Also, unlike Dark Souls, since this gauge is a bunch of um, pre-generated random uh, areas, there is no bonfire. I think I said that earlier, but there is no bonfire, which isn't good because that means every time you die, you have to start from the very beginning of that stage. And there's no rushing to the boss because one, you don't know where it is because everything's random. And two, before you beat each zone, Every enemy drops a key that you must kill all the enemies for in order to get the key. So whether that's killing a certain enemy or killing a lot of enemies or all the enemies, it's the only way to get past each zone. So you'll never just be able to rush past all the enemies to get to the boss again. So every time you die, you are starting over with literally nothing to show for it. 
And speaking of nothing to show for it, I guess there's one more thing I forgot. When you die, you lose all your stuff that's not equipped. So if you have a buster sword, a spear, and a short sword, and all three of them are great items, when you die, whatever item is not equipped, because you only equip two weapons, the third weapon is gone which is a problem your equipment too so if you don't you need to equip your best equipment immediately so this game really really only rewards success and heavily punishes defeat that's why i think that when you die you can keep mashing y until that purple meter come uh until that purple meter is depleted however you can only really successfully do that do that two or three times after the third time it doesn't actually let you. Even if you have the purple meter, you're gonna just die. So you will only get three chances. Remember, no healing items. And every time you fight a boss, there is a there is a green chest there, which is cool. Just make sure you don't try to open the chest in, at the wrong time and get trampled. I can go on for, honestly, another half hour about this game. But there's one more thing I'm gonna talk about this game, which is Maybe it was my game that did this, but I've uninstalled and reinstalled twice, and this was still a problem. This game is subbed in uh, English and dubbed in Chinese, which is fine. I have no problem with dubbed games. However, I've had multiple occasions where my text shows up as Chinese only. It happens about 20% of the time when I'm not reading a dead body. It happens When I'm reading a dead body on the floor, it really never happens. But when story things happen, or when there's a tutorial and they're teaching me how to do things, I can't read it half the time. So I didn't know I could block. I'm sure they told me. I didn't know I could block until two hours before making this review. So that's why I haven't been blocking. It was very surprising to me when I figured it out and I was kind of annoyed, honestly. Um, I don't know the story of the game because half the times when they talk in this game, it's in Chinese and I can't read it, so I just skip it. Um, there's just a lot of material that feels, um, rushed in this game. This game overall feels rushed. Um, and going back to the text, there's been multiple times where, well, it's happened twice, only twice, but when I'm reading the sub, it's incomprehensible. It doesn't make any sense. It'll say something along the lines of, go to weaponhab.i, something like that, which makes me feel like there's like a Google Translate to its Chinese English instead of just typing the Chinese English text. But I do have to say this game is on Steam and it is early access. And I do see that they are patching the game consistently. So maybe that's one of the things. I'm trying not to be too hard on it, but I did not know their basic mechanics in this game. Like there's a grapple hook. Instead of me trying to run toward an enemy shooting a bunch of arrows at me, I can just grapple to him. That wasn't even in the tutorial and I didn't even realize it until I had to do it. Um, there's an air dodge, not in, the not in the tutorial, but again, I, I shouldn't have learned on my own by accident after me mashing. So there's just a lot of um, polishing this game needs. And when it comes to, I guess, my final recommendation of should I buy this game? To be honest, before I made this video, it was kind of a maybe, but as I was writing the script for this video, and as I kept naming things, the proper, the bad combat, or not the, I'm sorry, the great combat, but the bad uh, gameplay mechanics, uh, the text, the not teaching how to play correctly, I don't honestly think I can. I don't really think you should play this game. Maybe in a couple months when the game gets patched, maybe they'll patch a lot of these problems out. But for me, one of the fundamental problems of the game is me losing my souls and never having a chance to get them back. It doesn't respect my time. And I think that's the biggest problem I have with this game. And for that reason, I don't think you should play this game. But what do you guys think? Are there more mechanics I'm missing? Is there something else that this tutorial has not told me? Maybe I'm being too harsh with the game. Maybe I can get my souls back. Maybe that was in Chinese too. But leave a comment below. Tell me what you guys think about this game. Do you agree? Uh, what questions you may have? And, you know, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And, you know, <laughs> have a great day. Thanks, guys.